So, it has been five months between the recording of the last video in this and this video. Uh, a lot of things have happened in between, obviously. Uh, it wasn't the smartest idea to set it up like that. But, in between now and then, I did play the Monarch's Journey for... Uh, Botstein of Gotland. Up here. And, well, I learned... Pretty much everything I need to know about playing Republic in that, uh, instead of having it in this series, which I actually planned. However, I did use the basics that we learned in this series so far as my starting point to do the Monarch's Journey for... Um, it was High Chief Botstein? Not entirely sure. Botstein of Gotland, anyway. And I finished the Monarch's Journey in one go, I didn't have to restart or retry. So I think it's a good proof of concept that the 15 episodes that have been out so far, I think it's 15, should be enough to get you started on how to play a Merchant Republic. I have since figured out a few more things. Um, for example, that the trade post limit doesn't matter. You can be over. The only drawback of being over is really that, well, you can't rebuild or build choose to build new trade posts where you might want them to. So right now having only 14 out of 12, it might seem like a good idea, but it prevents me from building up elsewhere. Um, right, beyond that, we were, as I said, on the right track on how to play a Merchant Republic. So I'm not going to make this series all that much longer. Uh, if you want to see a real in-depth playthrough of a Merchant Republic, do check out my uh, Botstein of Gotland Monarch's Journey video series. I think that's a, that's a much more comprehensive look at it. Uh, especially since after five months of not playing this save game, I have no idea where I left off, what my plans were, and I also didn't think to rewatch uh, that. However, um, I wanted to record something today. Uh, because Crusader Kings 3 is out two more days from today, I believe. And we just finished up playing as King Stefan of Serbia, creating a huge Serbian empire over here. So we have spent a lot of time in this general area here, um, in the Monarch's Journeys. And I feel like returning to this is, is kind of nice. So we are in 857, which is really early. And we're already earning a good bunch of money. I'm not entirely sure where my money is going, really. As family dues and retinue upkeep. Mainly the family dues, which costs us a whole bunch. Uh, as you can see, all our siblings, mainly all, awesome, almost all are dead. But we do have a uh, not too great heir. I mean, he's okay in terms of martial ability. All right, so um, I did also find a way of dealing with competing trade republics. Just take them over. If you take their main base, and they usually only hold very little, um, they vanish from the map. You take them out like that. They can be a hassle to deal with, especially since very often they are part of empires and not easily taken out. Um, but it's all doable. Let's check our pacts that we have. The Duke of Alemania. Yeah, that's a big one. Very strong, but big. Uh, right, what trade do we have here? We have Genoa, we have Am Amalfi, we have us and Sardinia. Where does Sardinia start from? No clue. That trade post is not ours. I did build a bunch, or I seized a bunch of trade posts over here in the Botsdane playthrough. And I'm mixing up, in my mind right now, I'm mixing up these uh, trade zones that I had. But our main competitor still around here is Ragusa, so if we take them out, uh, that would make our trade zones much more valuable and worthwhile. But of course, Ragusa 
resides underneath the protective wings of the Byzantine Empire, who are fairly difficult to challenge. It's not impossible if you have enough money. So we'll uh, get the game going a little bit. Um, but our main way of getting around and about is upgrading our own palace. Upgrading the cities that we hold, obviously, but mainly the palace, to be quite honest with you. Am I 70? I'm 70. I'm looking great for 70. <clears throat> so we already have the Grand Palace fully upgraded. Um, all the others here aren't all that important, except for the military ones. Those actually do help quite a bit with giving you more military power when you need it. Don't know you, you become a learned thing, which is now a reflex after playing the Monarch's Journey of King Stefan, trying to create a saintly bloodline and getting lots of people beatified. Right. Okay, so there is right now a rebellion in the Byzantine Empire, which usually is a good opportunity to challenge them because very often they are too preoccupied with their own war to really engage with you. But don't count on it. They might just break apart due to other reasons. I don't want a non-aggression pact with someone very far away. Um, let us comp... <laughs> no, we're not going to compose a book. We're 70 years old. We're not going to see the end of it and it costs us almost all the money we have. I think we already had a good amount of books. Monthly wealth. Oh yeah, yeah. That's not too shabby. We're doing okay. Could do with... Uh, yeah. Also, we need vassals. We need more land. I remember being very impressed with us that we even got this far. Because we are... Quite stuck. I'm still... How is there a Holy Roman Empire at 857? How is this not going to snowball into absolute... Craziness? So we will never be able to swear fealty to him unless we move our capital out of Venezia, which... <laughs> why would I do that? But if they ever come to subjugate, I'm, I'm all for it. <clears throat> I mean, the Holy Roman Empire might still break apart. But... I wouldn't bank on it. Right. Who are you? You are my daughter. You're good at this, so be good at this. Your plot, I don't know what you're doing, but stop it. <clears throat> A whole bunch of claims to press. But everyone around us is so strong, except for Bavaria. They're not very strong. They're big, but not strong. Serbia is also a pretty decent little goal for a target for a war. They have nothing. Bulgaria is broken apart. Yeah, the world this early in the game looks vastly different from what I'm used to, but being stuck between these huge empires early on, we just became a lunatic, but we don't mind, um, is <laughs> not really in the spirit of Crusader King starting early. I expect more like a, an Ireland situation where people can still move. I mean, the, the Muslims are fairly homogenous at this point in time but this this here that's an abomination it's an affront unto god so what could we do uh we are a kingdom so to increase our own holdings we might look into pressing claims for people who aren't kings uh but have claims on duchies for example so what we're going to do is we're going to look around a little bit. Sh have a little shop around and see who maybe have has uh, it's a theocracy. They don't have claims. Maybe we can get the high chiefdom of Austria. We need someone with a strong claim. 
and a man because our technology does not allow a good status for women yet. Increased military organization. Mostly all these two. There's no reason to linger on the edge of it. Could of course do our attempt at doing small stuff, seizing cities and whatnot here and there, but that would just invite the Byzantines to attack us once they reabsorb all this and make no mistake, they will eventually reabsorb this. And if I remember correctly, we hadn't had all that much luck <laughs> fighting actual wars with this. Ah, we also control this, I forgot. Doing not too badly. Badly. Could do, of course, a holy war for Tunis, which would invite all other Sunni leaders, which is the rest of the Muslim world, really, to fight against us. So, um, hmm, I would say that. Ah, thanks, thanks. On to a holy war here, which is weird. I not do a holy war on to you. you. I cast a spelly there. There's a lot of small stuff lingering around here, which I can't really do anything about. I think my main goal should be Ragusa anyway. How to go about it. Where are you fabricating me a claim? In Venezia. Am I trying to seize cities? I think I'm trying to seize the cities. Upgrade this port. Ah, we already had a hospital. Not bad for such an early point in time. How this man is living this long is beyond me. All the ailments he has. So we could just keep rooting out those families, getting rid of them. A revolt going on. Oh, you have just become a Christian nation. Christian tribe. That's interesting. you good at genius boy everything to go that way uh, sure the men's countries get a big boost to prosperity I'll always take that also be generous and build hospitals as well not just in our own homeland. So I think, because right now we don't really have anything else to do, we are going to go seize some cities. Or at least we're going to try. Might not work out. Let's see. Uh, let's get our ships going, which was... The letter C, and that's not enough. Let's get some more ships up here. Is that going to be enough? Nope. Nope. <laughs> there we go. That's enough ships. Oh. Bunch of troops together. Oh, 
And probably what I'm going to do... Press all the wrong buttons. Honestly, only take half. So let's leave our retinue behind. And again, of course, I don't know who the retinue is. I think these are the retinue. They're more even in numbers, generally. Let's send... This fleet down here. Keep this fleet here. We'll land here. We're, we're going to lose this trade post there to a siege, probably. That's okay. We have a good amount of commanders. We definitely want to land on our own ships, so we'll land here. And just... And our fleet levies because those are really silly expensive. And we're going to go on a big upgrading spree for our trade pools. And we are going to go with the tax income first. The merchant enclaves everywhere. That's enough for now. Still want to have some money in our back pocket. Aren't we really good? Yeah, we're really good. We should be leading. Remember being really good with this man. And he's 70 anyway. Might as well die in battle. Let's send these guys over there. A whole lot of pike. 810 pike. That's not... That's not a little bit of pike. That's a whole lot of pike. Okay, so the supply limit here is 1,000. How strong are these? Okay. Need a siege master in charge. So he's going to try and attack us here. Which is fine. Not really going to get anything out of it. This we can only win with the siege master, otherwise our troops are going to be attritioned down to hell and back. So he sees our troops and he can't land, so he'll just stay there. I'll speed it up a little bit. Winter has passed, so we no longer suffer this immense amount of attrition. Nice. So that should be fine. Right, that's a hundred percent for us. And remember, having your troops on your own cities allows you to disband them, which is great stuff, in my opinion. A new steward is required. And in a Republic, as I suspected, this does not really matter so much who you get. You don't need to pacify your strong vassals. Unless they're like feudal vassals or anything. Don't want to join a secret society as of right now. As long... Ah... Uh. Grand Mayor of Apulia, Duke of Sicily, 
Yeah, let's get give him a job. That's fine. It will always help the peasantry. Don't really care how that girl turns out. All right, let's continue upgrading our merchant enclaves. Which apparently we were doing already. Good. Hmm. No, let's not bankrupt ourselves. You you never know. You never know what you are going to need in terms of money. I mean, we, we are 73. Let's buy weird potions from weird people and feel weird after. Perfectly fine, in my opinion. Our Chancellor died. So this guy is a patrician, never put a tr patricians in, but this guy, he's a grand mayor, he's not a patrician, he's not part of the race for uh, getting things done in the Grand Republic, so it's fine. Come on, do something. And we feel great, we were well treated. Build cost. This runs out in a year. I don't know how we got that, but we're definitely taking advantage of it, building all these trade posts up. Definitely before March rolls around. Oh, we got a hunting dog. Good stuff. So we're well treated, we got the hunting dog, but we have the great pox, so I feel like I'm going to go well. Definitely need more legalism to allow ourselves to prevent stuff from passing outside the realm. We could go and plot kill this guy. Once he's dead, we can immediately start fighting him again. I have a son. Very good. And he will be a thrifty boy. As will all of them. You can be something, doesn't matter. Always hurts to say, but it is the truth. Eight inquisitors. Never ever give these jobs to your real important people. Only give it to people that are expandable. Or, you know, feudal vassals. Okay, March is fast approaching. We have a good dog. Luckily. Let us invest in more merchant enclaves first. maybe soup kitchen too because these are really quite expensive and we did did we not yeah but we don't have the money for that armory has been built in house skull biome Ooh, something happened here with the borders not much something can we before yeah we definitely want to invest in something here Small stable. I don't care about the glory of God. I care about the glory of myself here. I, I believe that these shipyards are pretty decent. I mean, you just saw, we needed to carry in boats from all around the world to make our stuff happen. And we saved a bunch of gold, as you saw. What does that matter? Because we will be rolling in cash. Rolling in cash. Care about this son? 
and be whatever he wants to be. I wonder how old he's going to be when he's dying. And if we can get him, that would be even better. So let's save up a little bit of money to push our campaign funds to get our genius son there in succession. If we manage to live long enough, see him grow up. Oh no. He has completely botched the treatment of our son. So now we have to survive for two more years. We'll just have to see. I hope he survives. Be a shame to lose the Grand Republic right now. Especially since uh, it happened once. Playing Grand Mayor Botstein and Jesus, the AI makes weird, weird, weird and terrible decisions. Very weird and very terrible. Supposed to improve relationships, he's supposed to get us claims at home so we can get all the cities. I am watching like a hawk. Always demand monetary compensation. This daughter will be turning 16 by the end of this year. There he is. Thrifty clerk. Diligent or patient. Give him diligent. And immediately switch our designated heir out. Estora shall be it. And we will instantly pump our campaign funds to deal with this and pump them to a place where he is still untouchable we will now play as him and we need to get him a wife maybe we can find him a genius wife she's 24 courtier in asberg could still give him a bunch of kids let's try this and we will pay the bride price too Okay, you definitely want people to continue your bloodline. West Frank, yeah. Get the Lombard. Another alliance out of it. He's right there next to us. He's a decent alliance goal. Target. I wouldn't have thought that we would have gotten this far. To actually see the genius sun. Riskier the road, and the greater the profit. That sounds a little bit like Ferengi rules. Portia died a natural death. Alright, let's invest in some more trade posts, shall we? So, once the merchant enclaves are all level 3, that's what we're gonna do first. All merchant enclaves must be level 3, and so they are. Full booth port, let's upgrade the fortifications here then. Now, 
we upgrade all the merchant ports because they increase the value of the trade zone which then in turn increases the money you get out of it especially if it's like a continuous trade zone which it will be once we get rid of all those <laughs> terrible terrible ragusian thugs and i'll leave it at that for today again if you really really want to see a full playthrough of something i mean it's not a start to finish playthrough but it is definitely a playthrough um of a merchant republic where it got very far um then you might want to go and have a look at the grand mayor botstein video series I don't know how far I'm going to play this because I reached quite a lot of stuff through Botstein and I'm not sure if I can really spawn on it. So the fundamentals are here. Go enjoy, play the game uh, if you're even still playing Crusader Kings 2, which I think is probably going to be the better option for a really, really long time. Again, CK3 is not out yet, but knowing Paradox, um, Crusader Kings 2 will remain the go-to game for a while until they fix their stuff right thanks for watching see you around bye bye